most of the people will not like it because it is yeah uh, so uh, appearance is the uttermost uh, important when you are uh, beginning to market your product okay the second one is the aroma but before moving to the aroma i would like to ask few of the participants or all of the participants in the room that how many of you have find uh, or have you have found it that uh, uh, any typical type of uh, meal or uh, burger or anything which is advertised on the billboard is not the same when you go actually to eat it at the same restaurant how many have, uh, have you experienced that it is different and it is shown in the advertisement? But it is the same, but uh, it is non, not as fluffy, it is not as juicy, it is not as colorful as it is shown in the advertisement. How many of you have uh, experienced this difference? Hmm. Hmm. See, uh, I am getting uh, a lot of reviews that it was different as it was shown in the advertisement and uh, mostly uh... Okay, so uh, what we have uh, what I was saying actually that uh, the uh, the burger which is advertised is typically sometimes shown bigger in the picture but when you uh, go to eat it in a uh, actual restaurant it the size is also small so what is the strategy up behind this see the main point here is that the advertisement and the first appearance is everything now when you are here at the restaurant you have already ordered it. You have already paid it. Now, the product or any type of burger that you have ordered by seeing the marketing billboard or advertisement billboard, uh, it's the you cannot refund it. Uh, yeah, some customers have uh, uh, shown some type of discouragement and uh, disappointment at the restaurants. That what is this? I'm uh, I was thinking that it will be a big burger but uh, this is not at advertised so there is a small type of uh, uh, you can say clause at the billboard and every, every advertisement that the real product might be different than the original product how many of you have uh, uh, seen it have you over uh, ever uh, uh, saw it do you ever saw it Okay, so uh, the next one that I would like to move to is the aroma. Now, the aroma plays a very significant role, a very crucial role. Uh, so, uh, the second part or the second most important part in the uh, uh, sensory evolution is the aroma. So, uh, let's just say um if the taste is good but before eating anything what a normal person does what you do before eating do you smell it or you don't smell it do you eat it uh, directly hmm so that's why uh, the aroma has a very important role uh, in giving the uh, a good score in the sensory evolution scorecard. And after the smell, you're, it's uh, obvious that you eat it. But uh, the first thing that you eat or do you feel is the taste after eating, right? So the taste uh, could be the third one. And the texture and overall experience could be the uh, the last one.
because you don't you, you usually don't pay attention enough to the texture you you the texture you can say uh, it could be what is inside the burger right what type of ketchup they have used you don't really bother it to see it right what how many types of tomato uh, slices they have uh, placed some of the people a uh, few who uh, who did the operation of the burger before eating they might be able to do this uh, that's why we have put the texture and overall all experience at the end because some individuals have this type of uh, uh, you can say habit of uh, performing the surgery of the burger before eating it so uh, <clears throat> uh that's why uh it is uh we are least concerned about it and uh, that is actually very wrong you should be concerned about it what you're eating okay so moving to the uh further odor observation by sniffing should be done before tasting the card should be clearly typed or printed you can go through this all this is a little bit more uh, information about the uh, uh, sensory uh, evolution for the food products you have a minute you can read these points Okay. These are the types of the sensory testing. So, different states, rating tests, sensory tests, and descriptive tests. Would anyone like to uh, add or uh, contribute that uh, any type of uh, uh, different taste is, what is different taste, what is rating taste, what is sensitivity taste? Hmm. Anyone? Okay, I have one answer. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, yeah, it is here. Will the let me see the chat. There's so much. Uh messages in the chat okay abdul wahid ahmed yeah exactly different as between two to three products of the parameters there are five uh, senses when tasting the food yeah that's right Bye, happy body. and uh, will there be a provided file about this presentation uh a file i don't think so but i will share the slides with you Shani? Sorry for the interruption. There was a mic open on the participant. That's why it caused a little bit uh, interruption. Hmm, different test. Two of the samples are the same and the other one is different. Okay. Okay, so 
uh see uh different uh, taste is to determine if there is any uh, perceptible difference between the two or more samples example you can perform the triangle test or due trio test let me see yeah there is a due trio test here okay so the rating test is uh, the measurement of the intensity or the degree of the uh, particular attribute in a sample like uh, a uh, hedonic scale or the numeric scale could be the best one in the rating test. Uh, anyhow, a lot of uh, tests have been mentioned in the B1, B2, B3 and up to the B7. <clears throat> okay, so the sensitivity test is to evaluate the ability of an individual to precise the differences in the sensory uh, stimuli. So you can perform the threshold test and the discrimination test okay so the descriptive tag te te uh, test is to provide a detailed description of the sensory attributes of a product like for example you can perform the descriptive analysis and the uh, flavor profile so uh, these four tests uh, uh, serve a very different purpose in the sensory evaluation. But uh, uh, the most uh, important thing is that they help the researchers and the product developers to gather the valuable information about the consumer perception and preferences. Okay. This is the difference test. You will prepare the two different samples of the food product you wish to test and you will uh, compare the one attribute to the another and record the response from the the tasters this is the paired comparison test So, uh, the compared or you can say comparison test is a type of a sensory evolution method and uh, it, this is a little bit uh, long, uh, so uh, please go through the slide. This is just uh, uh, a type of a example that how do we conduct the paired uh, comparison test. So, uh, what happens uh, in this type of method, the two samples are presented to the each participant and they are asked to express a preference and or choose a sample that exhibits uh, a specific characteristic more strongly. So this method is uh, particularly useful for determining the preferences or ranking between the two options. So uh, what happens? Uh, the participants receive the two samples side by side, then they evaluate and express the preferences based on the specific uh, gradation, like for the taste, aroma and texture. And then the results are analyzed to determine which option is preferred or perceived to be more positive or to be the best. So the step test helps to identify the preferences between the pairs of samples and is often used in product development to compare the variations and make the informed decisions about the product attributes. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, asking again and again, if you don't understand anything in English or if there's a particular thing that you haven't understood and you still have questions and you want to understand in Urdu, please let me know because uh, I get out of request that uh, please explain in Urdu. So uh, there are some, or you can say more than some uh, international students who don't understand the uh, our local language. So that's why uh, I have to conduct it in English. But uh, for you, I can make an exception. So that's why. Uh, Miss Mavish, what do you would like to understand in Urdu? Uh, 
uh, let me know if you would like to understand any particular thing in Urdu. I will be happy to uh, explain it. Okay. So, a due trio test A2. So, it is a specific type of sensory evolution method which is uh, designed to determine whether a sensory differences uh, exist between the two samples or not. So, selection is the first one where the reference of the sample you are known is there. So, uh, the evaluator is presented with a preference sample uh, known as the sample which you have it and it becomes or he becomes or she becomes familiar with its uh, characteristics. Furthermore, the presentation of the sample pairs is the uh, second part here. So the evaluator is presented again with the two samples side by side. One of the sample is a reference that you know and the other one is a test sample. Okay. So the selection of the sample closer to the reference is to evaluate or the evaluator task is to identify the sample that is more similar or closer to the reference. Okay. Now, uh, the third part I know that uh, a lot of participants might not have understood. Uh, let me explain it. Uh, see, uh, let's just say that you have developed, a, you have developed a product. Uh, let's say it's type of a sauce or it's type of a sauce which includes mayonnaise and everything. Okay. Now you are familiar with it. You know what it tastes like. Now you want to develop a little bit more good uh, type of product, but it is same, uh, but the taste has to be better. So what you do, you place it side by side and you tell the evaluator that uh, these are the two products. This is the old one or let's just say that you don't tell it. You don't uh, actually tell the evaluator uh, which is which one. Okay. Now the evaluator tries both of the sauces. And after that he marks or he evaluates that, yeah, this one is better. Now, what happens here if he is pointing the better one, which is the old one, then your new product has been failed. But if he's pointing at the new one, then your product is accepted. This is the uh, simple explanation of the selection of the sample closer to the reference. Okay. Uh, or what happens in some time, uh, let's just say that you are not... Uh, 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 giving any type of uh, previous sample now you the product is almost new the product is um, uh, it is being uh, you can say developed first time it is an innovative product so now you you place the five different types of sample the samples may vary between the pH taste uh, liquid activity and different type of parameters might be different in all of these five samples uh, resulting in the difference of the taste Okay, but not that type of taste which is not acceptable to eat. Okay, now what happens? The evaluator task is to try all of these five samples um, and uh, and tell whether which one is better among these five. The one he the evaluator selects is going to be marketed and placed in the, uh, you can say, it would be developed for the consumers. Okay. And then after that, the analysis is there where the results are then analyzed to determine if the evaluators can consistently distinguish between the reference and the test samples. So the due to you test is a difference that uh, is a difference test that helps to access uh, whether there is a, a perceptible difference between the reference and test samples. It is a cooperative method often used in the food. Uh, and beverage industries for to call uh, for the quality control and the product development. Okay. This is a little bit of explanation how the due trio test uh, is uh, gone. As you can see, it's uh, the set of numbers one, two, three, four, five, code number of the pairs. Same as R means same as reference sorry okay the r here is for the reference if it's same as reference you will take it 
it is not, you will not. You can add the code number like this, 72, whatever that you want, but it should be in the sequence like this. Now you can label it this. It was same as the preference, it was same. Okay. Here will be the date, name, product, and the signature. Okay, now we are at the triangle test. This is the uh, third test that we usually perform in the sensory evolution of the products. So you can go through this slide, then I will start explaining. Okay, so the triangle test is a type of a sensory discrimination test as we are discussing the third one now. We have discussed uh, two more before this. So um, what happens, it helps us to determine if there is a, a difference between the two samples as well, but uh, the function is different, uh, or you can say the method is different as compared to the previous one. So in this, we are mentioning triangle, so we will take three samples, not the two. That's why it is name is three uh, triangle one. So we we take three samples which are prepared. Two are identical. The you can name the. Let me see if uh, there is an example. Yeah, there is. So you will take three samples that are prepared, but in those three samples, the two are identical. The control of the reference and the one is different which is the test sample okay the two of the samples will be identical and the third one will be different which we will label it as a test sample okay then these three samples are presented to the evaluator in random order often in triangular arrangement that's why we call it as a triangle test okay and then the evaluator task is to identify the sample that is different from the others. So if the evaluator consistently identifies the odd sample correctly, it suggests that a, we can say noticeable difference between the sample is there. So uh, you can see that the code of sample is here and four, there are four, but we usually take three. Or if there are four, you can say the two can be identical one and these two can be the uh, you can say the sample one. Okay, these two could be the uh, the it could be identical. These these two could be uh, the sample one. We'll add, add the code of uh, code number of the samples, code number of the odd samples, and uh, you will comment on the odd samples that what was the uh, difference that you have they or the evaluators have detected. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now we are at the ranking test. You can go through this slide, then I will start explaining. See, in ranking test, evaluators are asked to rank a set of samples or the products based on the specific uh, type of uh, critician. So the overall preference or intensity of the particular attribute is uh, has to be there. 
So the goal is to establish a hereditary among the samples in indicating which one is preferred the most and has the highest level of the given characteristic. So this particular type of uh, phase in the testing or the sensory is a little bit uh, critical and it is a little bit difficult as well because uh, the procedures, the ranking data collection uh, is very important how you are ranking the samples. So the evaluators will be uh, presented with this uh, set of samples uh, simultaneously and uh, the ranking of the evaluators will be based upon the samples which are according to the uh, specified uh, tradition and upon that the scores are assigned based on the ranking like one two three or a b c it could be different and uh, according to the type of the uh, uh, organization they are conducting tests but it's usually not in the alphabetical it's usually numerical so yeah S the scores are assigned based on the ranking with the top rank samples receiving the highest score what happens in the analysis let's uh, uh, would like to highlight the analysis a little bit more for, uh, in a detail see uh in a st st uh, statistical methods, it can be applied to interpret the results and determine if there are any significant differences in the preferences and you can attribute to intensity among the samples. So ranking the test are very valuable in understanding the, the relative preferences or attributes of the different products and are commonly used in the sensory evolution studies, especially, <clears throat> sorry, uh, especially in the fields like food and consumer food uh, development. Uh, Muhammad uh, Shabir, uh, yeah, you have to uh, go through the attendance form that we will share at the end of the uh, session. And after that, uh, most probably will receive the certificate on your email uh, within three to four or a week. Uh, you can say because a lot of participants are there around uh, 80 to 90 so it takes a little bit time for the team to actually uh, make the certificate of every participant so you will get the attendance link at the end okay this is the a little bit of uh, uh, example of what is the ranking test is you can go through this and we'll move forward I'm really sorry to hear about it, that you have an electricity problem. Uh, please uh, note down uh, his name. He might have electricity problem, so we could not get the... Okay, I guess... Uh... Please note down the names in the chat they are saying. Okay, I guess then the single sample test is there. You can go through this, then I'll start explaining. Okay. Okay, there is no single sample test. Yeah. Okay. 
see in the single sample test the evaluators are presented with only one sample as you can see it's uh, there uh uh where where wait wait uh everyone uh, i only say it only for those who are in a hurry and emergency they can share their names but who are here who can attend the session please uh try your best to attend the session at the end it will take uh, not more than uh, 20 minutes more and then it will be ended because it is an awareness session i will not take it much further okay Okay, so evaluators are presented with only one sample and their task is to typically evaluate and rate the intensity or quality of the specific sensory attributes in that single sample. So uh, it's very, the procedure is very simple. Each evaluator receives a single sample. Then the evaluator access the sample based on the predetermined criteria that we discussed in the first uh, or the starting of this presentation, which was taste, aroma, texture, and overall impression. And then they provide the scores or rating for the uh, perceived attributes. And then the results are analyzed to understand uh, the sensory characteristics of the single sample and to draw the conclusions about the quality and the attributes. So single sample, uh, tests are useful when a direct comparison is not required. So that's why they are used. And uh, the goal in this single uh, simple test is to gather the information about the intrinsic qualities of a specific product or sample. So these tests are common in descriptive sensory analysis and product quality assessments. Okay, the two sample different tests. You can go through this slide. You can read the points. And then I will start explaining. Okay, so uh, let's see if this is, yeah, there is. So the two sample uh, difference uh, test is typically uh, uh, designed to determine if there is any difference between the two samples. Okay, that's why it is named as two as well. But uh, the objective is to access whether the sensory attributes of the two samples are able to uh, distinguish between the evaluators. So what is the procedure? See, uh, two samples are presented to the evaluator. No, so, sorry. Uh, three samples are presented to the evaluator um, with uh, being the, uh, the two identical one and being the one different. It is very similar to the uh, triangle test. Okay. But what we are doing in this, uh, don't get yourself confused. I explained the different type of test. Now the two sample different tests will include triangle test uh uh do trio test and the peer comparison test so i have explained everything in detail before uh, jumping on to this topic so it will be easy for you to understand okay so we already know what is triangle test it will be performed there and the task is to identify the odd samples okay then the do trio test will be performed in two sample different test where the uh, evaluator uh, is presented with the uh, reference sample and the two test samples. Okay, then the compared comparison test will be done in the two sample different test. Okay, all of these tests in the two sample different test is very crucial uh, in various industries, especially uh, in the uh, sensory attributes for the food products and uh, and the development of these food products along with the quality control and to ensure that the consistency and the identify uh, any type of uh, difference between the samples. Okay. 
ओके मल्टीपल सैंपल डिफरेंट टेस्ट इज ओके and go through this then i will start explaining Okay, so evaluators are presented in more than two samples. That's why I'm calling it as a multiple sample difference test. So, and the goal is to determine if there are any differences among all of these multiple samples. So, uh, this type of uh, test is often used when comparing the multiple uh, formulations or variations of the product. So, the common test for the multiple sample differences testing is the ANOVA. It's okay. Don't hesitate. What I am saying, I will explain it. ANOVA is the analysis of the variances. So it's a very st statical method used to access if there are any significant differences in means among the multiple samples. Okay. Um, and then the uh, Friedman test. Yeah, this is my favorite one because in a non-parametric uh, test. This is used when the data is not normally distributed. So the excess differences among multiple related samples will be tested in this one. Okay. Then the, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, yeah, there is a uh, Kruskai uh, Valis test. So this is also a non parametric alternative for the ANOVA test. It is independent for and it is for the independent samples as well. And uh, why it is used or when it is used, it is used when the data are not normally distributed as well. Okay. Yeah, I will change the slide if when I will finish it. Okay. And uh, the repeated measures of the ANOVA is to extend the ANOVA to repeat to be repeated or it is uh, be it will be placed as a repeated measurement uh, such as when the uh, you are evaluating the samples over time okay <clears throat> so all of these tests helps the researchers and product developers to identify the variation in the sensory attributes among the different samples as well providing uh, a very uh, good uh, differences and information into the uh, call it differences and overall uh, product performance and the choice of the test depends on the study design, data distribution and specific research objectives. Okay. Now uh, let's move to the hedonic test. Okay, so a uh, hydronic test is a sensory evolution as we are uh, in the today's session of the sensory. So uh, see, uh, it is designed to measure the overall liking and preferences of the consumer for the product. And it provides a very good information into the um, acceptability, acceptability and the uh, palatability of the product based on the consumer's subjective preferences. So uh, consumers in this one, the evaluators are not there, but the consumers are there itself. So they are presented with a sample of the product often without the knowledge of the brand or specific characteristics. And then they, the consumers use the uh, uh, hydronic uh, scale commonly known, or you can say ranging from dislike extremely to like this extremely to express their over liking for each sample. So I am saying the uh, nine point scale thing. So it will be ending to the extremely dislike and it will be moving at the end of the uh, like extremely. Okay. And then the uh, data collection is there. Let me move to the, yeah, it's there. 
I guess see it's also there. Like extremely, dislike extremely. Okay. So uh, the ratings from the multiple consumers are collected and analyzed to determine the average liking score for the each sample. And the results often provides an overall indication of the consumer preference for the tested products as well. Where is this? We are if we are uh, if you want to you know uh, uh, understand a little bit about this type of particular test. These are widely used in the food and beverage industries usually, as as well as in the various uh, product categories. And to understand the consumer preference and guide the product development and marketing strategies and whether they the, the product they are about to launch in the market will play a very good significant role to the uh, organization or the, um, you can say, the facility or the brand's uh, uh, name success or not. Okay. Now we are at the numerical score scoring test. See, uh, if we uh, talk about a little bit about the numerical scoring test, uh, evaluators use uh, a numerical scale to provide the quantitative assessments of the specific sensory attributes, or you can count overall quality of the product. So unlike the previous hydronic scales, uh, the me that measures the overall liking or the numerical scoring uh, test the focus on the specific characteristics only. So they allow for more detailed and objective evaluation as compared to the previous one. So evaluators will be assigned with a numerical score uh, to individual attributes, like how is the taste? This is the uh, numerical score testing is the one if there are any product developers in the room today, they have uh, experienced it so it's very common if uh, if you're a student as well you can use it as well and if you if you're in a final year student and you're developing your product you can use this method as well uh, you will give the evaluators and you will assign the evaluators with the numerical score to individual individually attribute to uh, taste aroma texture based on the predefined scale and your product if there are more things where like uh, how like these are the just examples uh, and you can uh, add more. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's take a break for the Azan. The Azan is going on. We'll take 10, 10 minutes break for the Azan. And uh, um, after that, we'll start at uh, one twenty. Okay. You know, if you want to drink water, take some break and refresh your mind, you can take. And then... Uh, <clears throat> attendance will be uh, taken and the end of the session uh, the session will take only uh, i can say the time will be at 1 30 we'll finish at 1 30 so only 10 minutes left if we uh, are taking the cellar break so we are taking the prayer break for five minutes or to 10 minutes we will uh, resume the session at 1 20 then the attendance will be shared and you can mark your attendance. You're most welcome. Uh, so the break is there. Uh, yeah, Muhammad Shan, if anybody asks in the chat, please let them know that uh, uh, a five minute uh, prayer break is there. So everyone can pray. Prayer is the first one. So please pray on time and uh, then we can resume the session. It's only 10 minutes are left.
ओके वेलकम बैक एवरीवन इट्स वन ट्वेंटी सो लेट्स स्टार्ट एंड फिनिश इट इन टेन मिनट्स सो वी वर एट द गिव मी अ मिनट देयर इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट मैसेज आई वुड लाइक टू आंसर एंड इट विल टेक अ वन मिनट देन आई वुड स्टार्ट एक्सप्लेनिंग okay so uh, thank you for waiting uh, and let's start i hope that you have all prayed and offered your prayers so as i was saying that the numerical score testing evaluates the use of numerical scale is to provide the assessment so we were discussing the attributes of the specific ratings where the evaluators assign uh, numerical score to the individual attributes where they go through the test uh, aroma texture based on the predefined scales and the precision is there where we offer a more precise and detailed analysis compared to the uh, high learning test and the results can be statically analyzed to identify the pattern trends and the significant difference in attribute that intensity in intensifies among the samples so descriptive analyze flavor profile analyze all of these example you can perform in this type of numerical scoring test so the numerical uh, scoring tests are the commonly used in the sensory evaluation and the sensory profiling and the product development we provide the comprehensive understanding of the sensory characteristics of the product so these tests allow for a more new sense evaluation and are particularly valuable when they tell information about the specific attributes which are very essential uh, for the product optimization okay this is example for the numerical scoring test okay let's move forward now we are at the composite scoring test please go through this okay so in the composite scoring test the evaluators uh, use a combination of numerical scores to uh, access the various sensory attributes and overall product quality uh, and uh, this method involves assigning the scores to multiple attributes and then calculating a composite or overall score that reflects the evaluators which are combined in a judgment so evaluators access the different attributes of the product using the numerical scores and they are assigned with different ways weights 
the weights which have the uh, effect of the gravity based on the uh, perceived in, in 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 importance allowing for a more uh, detailed evaluation then the final composite score is calculated by com combining the scores of the individual attributes and the results that provides a very hostilic assi assessment of the product considering the various sensory characteristics so composite scoring tests are often used in the sensory profiling and product development to capture the complexity of the consumer experience and they allow for a more comprehensive analysis of the products taking into account that multiple attributes are useful for making the informed decisions and uh, uh, about the product formulations and optimization okay uh, with that we come to an end to our today's session and I have actually reduced it uh, uh, for your understanding and because a lot of uh, participants are uh, requiring that uh, please uh, limit it to uh, 125. So it's 125. I'm concluding the session here. Anyhow, I will uh, share the presentation. There are two, three present uh, slides that are left. Uh, you can go through them and if you don't understand anything you can ask me personally on my whatsapp i will share my number uh in the attendance if you want to contact me you can if you don't understand anything i will have will be happy to explain to you in any time so uh, please over to miss mariam for the um concluding speech thank you everyone for being here and uh, take care of yourself Uh, Miss Mariam, are you here? Uh, Mr. Kashif, uh, Miss Mariam is here. Okay. Yes, sir. I think here I see. Please check if she is here. Okay, she has network issues. Okay, so. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, it's uh, okay, okay, not issue. Yeah. Okay, okay, no problem, no, no problem. Uh, okay, if she is not here, uh, uh, we shall end today's session here, and I will share the presentation slide with you in the group. And I would like to thank everyone for being here and ending today's session. And uh, a lot of participants has been asking me to share my profile. Uh, so this is a little bit about me. You can take the screenshot if you want to. So uh, just a little bit general theory. Uh, also, not the theory, a little bit information about me. So if you want to see that what I am, you can go through this uh, particular introductive uh, image. So, and those who want to leave, they can leave. It's all right. If, but please be sure to mark your attendance. So if you have any questions, you can ask me as well about regarding it to today's session. I'll be happy to answer them. uh how to add in the group okay you can contact me and i will be uh, happy to add you in the group you can uh boni uh faiso uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, the triangle test. Um, it will be much more uh, preferable. But if you're saying that there they are the three different treatment, so the triangle or the multiple uh, test would be better.
internal audit uh, i guess uh, internal audit course will be conducted in the coming month which is the january yeah. and there will be also lead auditor and uh, internal audit both uh, but uh, i am bringing uh, different type of trainings in the coming month it will be a very good one and it will be very different uh, to those we are we are actually conducting the previous training it will be much more different so internal order training will be there in the coming month of January and uh, and the lead auditor trainings and the halal internal order trainings will be there as well. So thank you for being here. Uh Miss uh, Remsha, but uh, let me know that in what type of uh, scenario you are asking. Uh, it is you are asking related to some type of uh, prior development, or you are asking generally, or you are asking in some uh, uh, standard. Uh, you meant uh, you can say. Hmm. Okay. So you are asking the difference between the corrective action, right? And, uh, and the prevention, preventive action or this prevention? Okay. See, uh, the corrective action addresses the existing issue or the non-conformity. So the corrective action aims to eliminate the root cause and prevent the reoccurrence. Whereas on the preventive action, on the other hand, is to prevent the uh, reoccurrence. No, no. Actually, on the it is focused on avoiding the issue before they occur. So a little bit of uh, difference is it could be here that the corrective action is for the one issue or the non-conformity which is already existing, but uh, the preventive action is for those is for those issues that they haven't occurred yet. They could occur. So. Uh, let's just say for the example of the corrective action, the issue is the high defect rate in the manufactured products. Okay, this is the issue. Now, what could be the corrective action for this? You will investigate the manufacturing process. You will identify the root cause. For example, machine is malfunctioning. You will fix it and you will implement the changes to prevent the similar defects. Okay. Now, if you talk about a little bit uh, example of the prevention, so you can say the potential issue is the lack of employees training leading to errors. So the preventive action you can take here, you will implement a comprehensive training program to ensure that the employees are well equipped with necessary skills, reducing the likelihood of the errors that could occur in the future. So corrective actions uh, uh, deals with the existing problem while the preventive action aims to stop the problems from arising in the first place. Okay, I hope it is clear to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mahmood Khan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mohammed Junaid. Thank you very much for being here today, guys. Most welcome, Mr. Amshar. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, take care of yourself. Be healthy. Have a good weekend. Or uh, at least I can say have a good day and night as well. Take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.